Okay, we got a 2007 Trailblazer with a 4.2. And this thing, if you let it set in idle very long, it starts getting really rough and um, we'll go all the way to where it'll want to stall out and go into limp mode. So, um, I went and looked at it the other day and cleared the codes. And <clears throat> the codes were leading back to um, throttle body being carboned up. Now, after he drove it for a while, he brought it back here today to get it fixed. And there's a PO506 code now, idle control system RPM too low. And there's a P2119 throttle close position performance. So, the fuel level sensor circuit, we know that's bad. It's a sensor in this tank. So, what I'm going to do is take the PO506 and we're going to back up here. We'll go down here to Troubleshooter. This is one nice thing about this. Now, it ain't going to tell you what the problem is, but it gives you a good direction where to go. Um, but we'll go up here to PO codes. We'll hit this. We'll go down to a PO5s. PO 506. Okay, it says inspect TB for carbon buildup. Clean if needed. So, it's a different code, but it's still related to the codes that was on here the other day, which all of them go back to um, carbon in the throttle body. So, um, we'll go take that off and clean her out a little bit. Okay, now to get to this throttle body back here that we need to clean, what we're going to do is loosen the clamps and take the bolt out. And probably loosen the clamp on this fitting and try to get this up out of there. Okay, what I've done is I took a screwdriver and I loosened this clamp. There's one right here going into the throttle body I also loosened. Now there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. We want to loosen it up to take it out. Now, this piece we should be able to pick it up off here. Actually, no, there's two bolts. There's one back here, too. See, I had that hose off and it was in my way. I didn't see it there. Alright, so now we should be able to pick this right up off of here. When you do something like this, you go easy to make sure that there's no vacuum hose or wires attached to anything on no matter what you're doing. That way you're not ripping them apart. Now there is a hose right here. <clears throat> so we'll pull that off. And there's a connector back here I see now for the wire. On this loom we might want to take that apart. And then we'll be able to pick this right up off of there. Okay, here's the throttle plate. And if you look, you can see, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. You can see the black inside there. It may be easier for me to see than on the camera. But that is what makes a not run right. Because that carbon gets in there between the throttle plate and this housing right here then this throttle plate doesn't close good enough. Well, if there's dirt down here, it might leak air halfway around that, and then it doesn't compensate for the idle air and stuff right. So what we're gonna do is disconnect that line and that wire, then we'll take them three bolts right out of there, and we're gonna pull this right off of here. Now, one thing, don't mess around a lot. You could turn the key on, have someone step on the gas pedal, and this will open up, and you could probably clean it here. Um, the only thing is, if you do that, some of your stuff you're cleaning, carbon chunks and all, might wash down into the motor. So that might not be the best thing. The other thing is, don't start pushing this open and closed. Um, there's a lot of people that will clean the throttle body, and then they... Um, put it back together, it'll idle at 2,000 RPM or better. 
and a lot of times because if you move this stuff and there's a stepper motor here and all it's all electronic there's no cable so it's electric it'll get out of time like with the computer and um, you might have to do an idle relearn procedure it will do it on its own usually um, but it may take a long time and also there's a coating in these okay so they suggest to use a regular throttle body cleaner not a carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner nothing else so just to be on the safe side I use the regular um, cleaner okay what you don't find you don't have this little gray piece here and it's gonna be kinda held in by this little piece right here in the middle this little tang is gonna be held underneath that clip now I just went ahead and removed it what you want to do is get that out of there so you can push it on that tang and once you push it on this this is what releases it right here so if you see Jack here see the two prongs sticking down down in that hole see how they picks them up so what that gray thing is just a safety just do not lose it the other thing is on this fuel line here if you'll see right here there's a little tab sticking out right here if you, sometimes you gotta push in a little bit if you push down on that tab that fuel line will come right off okay okay now this is just 10 millimeter so now we're just going to take the four bolts out and I like to loosen them up staggered from each other just a little bit And then we can go ahead and just take them out. Okay, now we got those bolts removed. This is coming right off of here. And there we have. Now be very careful with this gasket right here. And I usually try to take a rag and try to wipe anything in here out. And here, hope you can see that. Here's what the inside of it looks like. That's why I like to take them off. Okay, a lot of people make this. Now you want some kind of throttle body cleaner. And what I do have here, in case I do need it, this is a very soft bristled plastic brush. Don't use no metal wire and, and resist the urge to try to scrape it. And I got a rag to wipe some. I'm gonna do it mostly with this spray. See, it does a very good job of taking most of it away right away. Okay, so I'm going to let that soak for a minute, and I'm going to continue cleaning that. Um, if you really had to, you could barely bump that open just a barely bit. But usually the spray cleaner will get most of it good enough for you. Okay, here's a look at the throttle body now. As you can see, it's a whole lot cleaner. Now, this throttle plate was moving a little bit okay but mostly what i done was kept spraying that stuff in there and wiping and most of it out between the throttle plate and this wall is really critical of where it seals so you know you can move it a little bit and just kind of wipe in there or take a little brush with let the bristles get in there um try not to scratch this up much though so now what we're going to do is that we've had this off and cleaned and dry, let it dry out we're going to put it back up on here okay I've got all four bolts started I got this one ran a little bit loose as you can see it's still real loose what I'm going to do is just tighten this down until that plainness goes away okay I don't want to put no torque on it nothing like that I just try to get the play out of it just so it touches as closer than I was. Okay, now see, I don't have that play, so I don't want to crank this down because it'll twist this. So I'll come up here now and I'll do the same thing.
see how I still got to play, so I'll go farther. All you want to do is bring this down so everything is just starting to touch. And I'll do that with all four. And then I'll tighten them up in a crisscross pattern also. Now, I did not look up the torque specs on this. Um, you can if you wish. See, I'm just getting them snug. I want all four of them to be touching before I tighten any of them down. I'll snug them. I'll just keep snugging them down a little bit by a little bit. I'll go around them a couple times like that. See, now this one's a little bit loose. And get them to where I feel comfortable with them. You can say there is a torque spec, I'm sure, if you want to look it up and use a torque wrench. If you're not sure of how tight to put them. Okay, now we'll put these wires back on. Um, I did do this other wire, I don't know if I remember telling you. The reason I've done it, because it's a real easy clip and it just helps get this wire out of the way. So you're going to want to put these back. And once you get that, then I gotta get that gray piece and put back in here, don't forget it. Now this fuel line, it's pretty much just push it over top. Ugh. You just push it over and it'll click. You might have to push that down. Okay, but it's just the same way it comes off. And now you're good. You just gotta, we gotta put that gray. And you just gotta line that gray thing up in there and just push it in is all you gotta do. Okay, so I guess what we gotta do now is get this back on. And you just gotta remember that this one slides over the top of that. Don't forget about your hose down here in the front. And then this should just slide over top of that. And then we can put our two bolts back. I always in. like starting the bolts and stuff like that and get all of them started before I tighten any of them down. Now one thing very important is when you put these on here, you want to make sure you tighten them up. Because if you lose leave one of these clamps loose, it could suck air in there and make the car not run right. So um make sure those are snug. Now what we'll do is we'll start this up and make sure we're not running at 2,000 RPM or better. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now, now the idle the idle relearn will kind of relearn itself. Um, if you're having a lot of issues and real high RPMs, you may have to have a computer put on it and do the idle relearn procedure. But as long as you're not opening and closing that gate. And stuff on the throttle body you really shouldn't have no issue with this um, I did move a little bit so you get under the plate but um, just be careful now not all models are are that way that is so critical about moving that but I just try not to do it on none of them 